Hello and welcome to this Manufacturing Systems Technology Part 2, Module 12. We were doing process FMEA and in, in context of it, which we had, uh, we had identified some failure modes and tried to actually do countermeasures so that these modes get eliminated. So we did the first uh, mode, which was about in inserting or adding a, uh, you know, a positive depth stop layer with a limit switch, which would actually do the dispensing uh, of the spray. Okay. And there we found out that there is a reduction in the risk priority number from 280 to 70. The other is basically the spray heads clogged. Uh, here, the spray heads clogged problem, which is the number two problem, okay, which was having a RPN of 105, uh, was really about that the viscosity was too high or temperature was too low or the pressure was too low. So there was no um, as such uh, set pattern as to what would be the ideal uh, temperature, viscosity and pressure at which the wax flow could happen in an uninterrupted manner and then it could. Uh, prevent the stop, you know, prevent the clogging of the nozzles or the clog, the the uh, sort of hindrances to the nozzle, etc. So uh, here, uh, the assembly engineering decided, or the process engineer decided, to use a DOE or a design of experiments uh, uh, scheme, where you could optimize the various parameters related to the temperature, viscosity, and pressure. And uh, there was an optimization carried out based on viscosity versus temperature versus pressure here. And some solution was provided as to what would be the ideal ranges of these different values. Okay. And so manufacturing engineering again was given a target of implementing this by a certain date, which they did. So the temperature and pressure limits were determined and uh, limit controls now were installed. For example, there would be a thermocouple inserted inside the uh, bottle of the wax. Uh, which would be uh, fed into the uh, the pumps, uh, so that you know the moment the temperature goes above a certain limit, the pumping would start. So there is some kind of a foolproofing switching which has been established between the bottle of the uh, wax fed into the system and the pumping unit. Okay, so it can uh, be set at the particular temperature range in question, and then also some controls have been ins inserted on the pressure at which the dispensing can happen. So uh, there is a <laughs> pressure gauge which is going to uh, give you the uh, the operating pressure of the <laughs> liquid wax or the molted wax within the circuit, and that is also going to in a way control the spraying process. So uh, unless and until the pressure is attained, or unless and until a certain set value of temperature, uh, which has been arrived at from the DOE <laughs> design of experiments have been attained, the wax will not even flow into the system. So obviously, uh, after that, the control charts, which I will talk about uh, in details uh, following this particular module, they were plotted and a, a CPK value was uh, of 1.85 was shown in the process. And I will actually in detail illustrate how control charts can be plotted and calculate CPK for you later modules. But then this was a very good optimization experiment suggested by the assembly engineer and the manufacturing engineering implemented it. Now let us look at what is the RPN because of the implementation of the same. So obviously the severity and the detectability does not change because the process of checking is still the spray pattern test which was there earlier or maybe even preventive maintenance schedules which were uh, earlier for preventing this problem. Uh, but then you know the occurrence has reduced really from 30 percent value earlier sorry 50 percent value earlier as you can see here all the way to about 10 percent. Okay. So the occurrence of this defect is reduced because of the countermeasure and subsequently the RPM has come down from 105 as shown in this particular uh, you know uh, column 17 column 18 to 21. Okay. So in the first uh, problem which was identified the RPM was reduced from 280 to 70 and the second problem it comes from 105 to 21. So both the countermeasures which have been implemented show efficacy and they show that there is a reduction in the occurrence because of those countermeasures. And this way it a correct documentation of the process plan has been prepared and now you have to follow the standards which uh, have been obtained or the, or the checkpoints which have been obtained at the various levels like the automation foolproofing or even the DOE based analysis of the temperature pressure uh, ranges and then also control limit <coughs> switches which would uh, ensure that this would happen. Okay. And so always there would be a low occurrence based on 
such a complete illustration. So, essentially FMEA is nothing but an organized approach of problem solving by identifying what are the many causes which are there and trying to eliminate with countermeasures some of the causes which are the most occurring ones. Okay. So, that is essentially what FMEA is and nothing beyond. Okay. So, we uh, leave the spray head deformed problem due to impact because of the low RPN it already has. So, it is not really of critical importance to us at this particular level it is 28 RPN. The other which is very very important is spray time insufficient because as you know the RPN was very high of 392 earlier and we would like to reduce this. So, basically here the uh, whole uh, you know process engineers who were there suggested that you install a spray timer. So, unless and until this uh, whole time cycle of spraying of the wax is <coughs> proceeded, uh, you, there, is, there is no way that the dispensing can stop. Okay. So, therefore, uh, the operator has to actually now <coughs> not only uh, rotate the nozzle handle in the complex profile that has been shown in the door lower all the way, uh, but it has to be smoothened up with the total timing of the spray. So, that obviously, if at one place the spray is more and another is less, the there would be a beading in the place where the spray is more okay. and that can be detected in the subsequent stages when they are going to check for the critical coverage of the doors by looking at 10 doors per shift and lot sampling. So, they are also going to investigate what is the depth of the wax lining which has been laid in and any beading or any <coughs> area which is insufficiently covered would come up in such a checkpoints. So, therefore, this spray timer was a very important aspect which was ins inserted in the system that unless and until the, <coughs> uh, the wax is completely covered uh, or unless and until the so total time that the wax is supposed to be covered for executes, the dispensing will not stop. Okay. So, therefore, the operator has to keep the, the gun inside the door for that particular time and nothing beyond. So, obviously, when the operator knows that it has to uh, because otherwise if he just uh, pulls out the gun, uh, the dispensing will still be continuing and it will spread on the different members of the car body like the let us say the door inner or even to some extent the station that he is standing etcetera and he will avoid this unpleasantness. So, it is a full proofing on the timing that he is spending to doing the wax spraying that is number one. Number two is that <laughs> obviously, because of the uh, correct lot sampling uh, in terms of the depth of wax etcetera and the measurements therein, if he even dispenses it. Uh, for the same amount of time duration, but only at one place within the door that is also going to get caught up. Okay. So, it is some kind of a full proofing. So, here the maintenance engineering was given this initiative to install the spray timer. Obviously, it was in the machine that this timing was uh, given because from one cycle to another the PLC or the programmable logic controller in the machine would have to be uh, given a timing clause. Okay. So, that the cycle does not end before the timing ends. Okay and uh, this automatic spray timer was installed uh, by the certain target date which was given and the operator uh, starts uh, the spray and timer controls shut off. So, <coughs> then a control chart was processed uh, or, or plotted again and it was showing a CPK value of 2.05 which is reasonably good. Okay. And so, therefore, uh, what was observed again in the terms of occurrence that the 80 percent occurrence which was happening earlier because of this one step was about 10 percent now and the RPN obviously reduced because of that to 49 from 392. So, in a way what you have done is you have identified the three top causes and you have taken countermeasures to the three top causes and with the RPM sequ RPN sequence you are trying to see if the RPN is getting reduced. So, is it there the is there complete effectivity? or efficacy of the <laughs> control that has been introduced okay, or the new process modification that has been introduced, which will not allow the particular reason or uh, the cause of the failure to happen. So, that the overall failure goes down because of that. So, that is it is also known as a defect tree analysis sometimes that is how FMEA process works. You are probably now quite aware of uh, how FMEA can be carried out. And so, now we will just go to the next section, which is uh, sort of important here, uh, which talks about how to improve product quality during the production phase. So, <laughs> obviously, quality can be designed into a product as you have seen earlier through Taguchi's uh, robust design approach and uh, uh, then the product needs to be manufactured and so therefore, the control of the uh, quality of the product during the manufacturing process is also very, very uh, essential. 
So, there may be some assignable causes which may occur and they may seemingly be random at beginning, but then there is a set pattern of these causes which would go over a long time duration which would lead to the change in the manufacturability, uh, manufacturing quality of the product etcetera. And these assignable causes if allowed to continue for a long time may eventually lead to the shift of the process to be uh, out of bounds okay, of the limits which the process is designed for. And there has to be some kind of a counteraction which is taken at that level so that it comes back to normalcy and within the control guidelines which have been given for the process the product flows. Okay. And so therefore, <coughs> it is very very important to reduce what you call the variability uh, of a production process so that the output quality is always going to be good quality. Okay. And then it can obviously eliminate costs, it can eliminate wastes uh, because of this <coughs> complete you know control of the manufacturing process. So, you saw earlier with the FME analysis how we have solved a problem in the manufacturing process. Now, there are many other <coughs> ways and means for solving uh, you know or, or for maybe uh, coming to a reverse gear a little bit and trying to look at whether the process is a controlled one or if it is out of control then can we bring it back to control. So, there are many real time strategies which are involved and one of them is obviously control charts where you can actually see a measurable dimension of or an output or a quality characteristic coming out and you can monitor that uh, with some control guidelines which are actually the upper and the, the maximum upper and the maximum lower limit of the particular parameter that is allowed uh, in the system. And the moment it goes outside that you start focusing on the process and control the process so that it can come between that control guidelines. So, in a way uh, if you look at it schematically we have a, a transformation process as a manufacturing process. Uh, many inputs like material machine operator information others on this transformation process. Obviously, it gives an output okay. and then there are certain uh, sampled outputs which are measured and there are detectable assignable causes which are uh, made because of which whatever variation in the output is recorded is sort of um, uh, identified. And then obviously, the root causes have to be eliminated and then again uh, whatever implementing has to be done regarding the correcting measures which identify the root causes and eliminate them has to be fed back into the transformation process. So, that it now has a measured output which is within reasonable limits. Okay. So, that is how the whole process of quality uh, improvement <laughs> can happen within any manufacturing uh, process it is very important. And there are many uh, parameters which are or there are many methods of study in which you can actually measure this output and report this output. So, that it can give you some kind of an understanding. So, there are many mainly seven different tools uh, which are used uh, and I can say that this use is more uh, how to represent statistically the measured output in a manner. So, that it comes quickly to the eyes of the, uh, uh, the, the, the control management of the particular process. Okay. So, these are known as the uh, seven tools of quality control and they are widely used as process improvement tools. So, one of them is the obviously the histogram. Uh, then we have the check sheet, the Pareto chart, the cause and effect diagram, the defect concentration diagram, scatter diagram and finally, the control charts. Okay. So, I am going to now illustrate briefly about how these uh, seven tools of quality control can be utilized or what they are really. And uh, with a lot of emphasis on to this lower the last category which is the control chart category, because uh, this is something that is a real time health monitoring of a certain process. Okay. So, it is a parametric for illustrating that and it has to be necessarily done within any transformation process to keep it in uh, limits and bounds of whatever it has been planned for. So, <coughs> therefore, let us look at the first aspect which is the histogram. So, obviously, histogram is about laying out the measurements in terms of the measurement and the frequency. Let us say we are talking about a shaft okay, and a machine produces a shaft within the tolerance limit of 0.995 inches and 1.095 inches and 1.05 inches. Okay. And this is a numerically controlled machine that we are trying to measure the process capability of. And uh, we are plotting the shaft diameters against the frequency for a sample uh, of maybe uh, let us say about close to uh, 3 or 400 pieces. And here we see that uh, out of the measurements of uh, 3 and 400 samples out of maybe 30,000 which are produced by this numerically sh controlled shaft uh, for a period of let us say 2 days or 1 and a half days. Uh, you have a distribution 
uh, in terms of a frequency that means the uh, number of occurrences uh, with the shaft diameter. So, on the x axis here you are plotting the shaft diameter. Let us say we are talking about a 1 inch uh, diameter emanating from the process and uh, in this whole 300 measurements so 300 plus measurements which are merely a sample representing the 30,000 pieces which are being made you find out that the shaft of diameter 1 inches occurs something like 130 times. Okay. So, this is the frequency and you are plotting this histogram based on that diameter and the frequency over which that diameter is repeated. Similarly, you have measurements like 1.0, 1.99 etcetera and their frequencies have been plotted in this particular histogram. So, this is called a histogram. right? So, this plot of frequency versus occurrence of the particular dimension uh, that means, the dimension and the occurrence it has come, a number of occurrences that it has had. This is basically the histogram. Uh, you can see that it is sort of a bell shaped you know uh, distribution like this that it is representing and there are many other influences that can be drawn by looking at this figure particularly. Okay. But uh, we see that the distribution of the shaft diameter is quite symmetric about the mean value that is 1 inches. Okay. So, this is something that is a learning experience for us that the process is in within control that when the specification says 1 plus minus 0 0.05 the maximum number of occurrences that are happening that we are having out of all the observations you know uh, let us say 300 plus samples out of this 30,000 observations which you are talking about. They are having a highest number of uh, occurrences along the mean that is 1 inches. Okay. So, this gives you very good idea whether the process is in control or not uh, at a glance by looking at some process or system like this. So, we will probably close on this particular module in the interest of time, but the other tools of QC like let us say the uh, defect chart or the control uh, charts or even the uh, scattered diagrams etcetera we will take up in the subsequent modules. Thank you so much.